This is part of a series of 12 short audios in which I attempt to answer the 12 most common objections a person makes against becoming a Christian. Number 8. I have too much to give up. Too much, you say. Even if you owned the entire world, the question that Jesus posed would be relevant. And this is the question. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? There simply isn't any comparison, you see, between what is temporary and what is eternal. As far as the length of time goes, 70 years or so are not even a drop in the ocean of eternity, not a drop. When we have been in God's presence for 10,000 years, the hymn says, with no less days to sing his praise, how can that be? Because there's no time to be used up. It's an endless stream of refreshing life that flows from the throne of God. And people spend fortunes on gaining a few extra months of pain and anxiety in this world and think nothing of the free gift of eternity. Too much to give up. Eternity is not only infinite and endless time. It's unimaginable quality. Everything is enhanced to a degree that, if we were to see it now, the beauty of it would destroy us. The beauty of holiness will radiate from everything, from the blades of grass to the mountains and rocks. The poet, Keats, who died at 24, knew well the beauty of this world, but was also aware of its transience. He said this, Here, where men sit and hear each other groan, where palsy shakes a few sad last grey hairs, where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies, where but to think is to be full of sorrow and leaden-eyed despairs. Now that may all sound very gloomy, but there is truth in it. We're all familiar with pictures of aged actors who were once the envy of society. Good looks, the admiration of others, and wealth, and they're now bent over, maybe even wheelchair-bound. And here's the lesson. If you don't give up those things that you think are so precious, they'll be forcibly taken from you anyway. No one gets to keep them. You can actually give up what you can't keep and gain that which can never be taken from you. That's some wonderful exchange. Many people spend enormous amounts of time and effort on the body, but it's only a fragile container that holds an eternal and priceless spirit. Yet little time or effort is given to the spirit. Who can measure the value of an eternal soul? Imagine this. Imagine a pair of massive scales with the entire globe of earth in one side. And then somebody comes and places in the other side the tiniest speck, your human soul, your spirit. Now that side would immediately go down, far outweighing the entire earth. You see, the earth, with all its beauty and richness and long, long history, will one day be dissolved and God will do an entirely new thing. It's called a new heaven and a new earth in the Bible and it will be as unlike the first heaven and earth as sweet singing is different from the screech of chalk on a blackboard. But you're concerned about giving up a few crumbs of earth you don't even own the entire earth. There might be a little excuse if you did, but you don't. And yet you cling on to the few rags of this earth. I'm certain that no thoughtful person on their deathbed says, I wish I had been richer and had more possessions. I wish my house had been bigger. I wish my car had been faster. You see, it's over and they're looking into eternity and they're in a vehicle that's only going to take them a few more miles, they're freewheeling and running into the hard shoulder. They're probably thinking, I wish I'd spent more time praying, reading the Bible and getting to know God more. I wish I knew where I was going. Finally, two things. Do you really think that God would ask you to give up anything that was good for you? He made you and knows exactly what you need to live a full life here and be with him for eternity. And he loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to give you life and life in all its fullness. Not a petty life filled with worthless trinkets, but an abundant life 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over. As David said, my cup runneth over. Here is God's assurance, and it's more valuable than the entire world. The Bible says this, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Romans 8.32 do you know the world has nothing to compare but you won't get to know that until you receive him into your life receive him today